Next on TCM, Gypsy, then MASH, and later, Ordinary People. Look back on Donald Sutherland's remarkable career tonight. Next on TCM, MASH, then Ordinary People, and later, Clute. Donald Sutherland's On the Case tonight on TCM. Good evening, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where tonight's lineup pays tribute to a Canadian actor who for decades has been praised for the authenticity, often alarming authenticity, he brought to his roles. And those roles were always so varied. The New York Times described him as a chameleon of a movie star. The actor is Donald Sutherland, who died in June at the age of 88. Donald Sutherland became a star during the period I consider the greatest in American cinema history, the late 1960s to the late 70s. His director on the 2019 drama Ad Astra, James Gray, told The Guardian that Sutherland's rise to fame in those years is a testament to what a wonderfully fertile time period that was for cinema. He could only have happened in that moment, Gray said. In part, I believe Gray meant that era afforded filmmakers the freedom to create movies suited almost entirely to their vision, largely free from studio interference. That also gave these directors a wide casting berth, which meant they could hire an actor like Donald Sutherland, who didn't conform to traditional stereotypes of what a leading man in Hollywood should look like. This was a truism Sutherland well understood. He once memorably described a meeting with a producer who wasn't giving him a role. Sorry, you're the best actor for this part, Sutherland said, the producer told him. But this part calls for a guy next door type, and you don't look like you've ever lived next door to anyone. The four films in tonight's lineup include some of Donald Sutherland's best-known performances. Later, we'll see him as a father fighting the emotional gulf developing between him and his son and ordinary people, as a taciturn investigator with Jane Fonda in Clute, and a loose cannon driving a tank in Kelly's Heroes. But we begin tonight with Sutherland shining in a counterculture masterpiece that forever raised the bar for political satire on the big screen. It is also the film that made him a star from 1970, directed by Robert Altman, M.A.S.H. MASH is a military acronym for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. In the film, this particular MASH unit is near the front lines in the Korean War. Sutherland gets top billing as Hawkeye Pierce, one of three vulgar, lewd, offensive, often mean, and consistently amusing surgeons, men with absolutely no respect for the military chain of command. His partners in nonconformity are Trapper John McIntyre, played by Elliot Gould, and Duke Forrest, that's Tom Skerritt. Made during some of the fiercest months of the Vietnam War, Robert Altman intentionally removed nearly every instance of the word Korea from the film to make it an effective allegory for Vietnam. From 1970, also with Robert Duvall, Sally Kellerman, and Gary Berghoff as Radar, the only member of the cast who went on to star in the hit CBS television series based on the movie, this is M.A.S.H. After Donald Sutherland's death in June, Elliot Gould told The Guardian that he and Sutherland had such a deep, sublime chemistry. That chemistry was so clearly on display in M.A.S.H. Unfortunately for director Robert Altman, relatively new to the business at the time, his two leading actors bonded in part by questioning Altman's unique filmmaking style. They were especially unhappy with Altman's use of overlapping conversation, which came to be a signature style of Altman's, a style regularly mimicked in television and movies today. At the time, though, it was new, and it seemed crazy. 20th Century Fox told the actors not to worry, saying the film was destined for a limited release. Wrong again, Bob, as my father would say. Not in reference to Robert Altman, by the way, who it turns out was right. MASH became one of the highest grossing films of 1970. The Elliot Gould, Donald Sutherland friendship lasted a lifetime. Donald was a giant, not only physically, but as a talent, said Gould after his friend's death in June. He was also enormously kind and gentle. It's never easy losing the caliber of human being an actor like Donald, but this one really profoundly hurts because Donald was like my brother, 
a big part of my own career. Rest in peace, you dear, dear, kind friend, Gould concluded. I love you, and I will never forget you. That, by the way, is also a glimpse into the kind of person Elliot Gould is. Coming up, Donald Sutherland stars with Mary Tyler Moore, Timothy Hutton, and Judd Hirsch in Robert Redford's directorial debut from 1980, Ordinary People, is next on TCM. Next on TCM, Ordinary People, then Clute, and later, Kelly's Heroes. Donald Sutherland's Our Hero Tonight. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue with tonight's memorial tribute to a true titan among actors, Donald Sutherland, who died in June, a month shy of his 89th birthday. Up next, Sutherland stars with Mary Tyler Moore and Timothy Hutton in a gut-wrenching family drama directed by Robert Redford, making his directorial debut from 1980, Ordinary People. After Donald Sutherland's death, tributes poured in over social and legacy media. Helen Mirren called Sutherland one of the smartest actors I ever worked with. He combined this great intelligence with a deep sensitivity and with a seriousness about his profession as an actor. This all made him into the legend of film that he became. Ron Howard, who directed Sutherland in Backdraft, echoed Mirren's observations, calling Sutherland one of the most intelligent, interesting and engrossing film actors of all time. Sutherland was engrossing for us to watch in part because of how engrossed he became in his parts. Take, for example, President Snow, his character in the Hunger Games movies. Gary Ross, who wrote and directed the first film, said Sutherland had this loving enthusiasm for the work. He wanted to feel the job and have you feel it all with him every second. Over the 60 years he spent in front of the camera, Sutherland proved he could do anything, from hit comedies like Animal House and M.A.S.H., to haunting thrillers like Don't Look Now and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, to intense Oscar-winning dramas like Clute, JFK, and our film, Ordinary People. Alvin Sargent wrote the Oscar-winning screenplay based on a novel by Judith Guest about a wealthy family in suburban Chicago trying to cope with a terrible tragedy that threatens to tear the family apart. From Paramount in 1980, also with Judd Hirsch, this is the winner of four Oscars, Best Director for Robert Redford, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Supporting Actor for Timothy Hutton in his film debut, and Best Picture, Ordinary People. After a few rocky early collaborations with filmmakers, Donald Sutherland, who played the father in Ordinary People, began to develop great respect for his directors, saying that film acting is all about the surrender of will to the director. Ultimately, Sutherland, who had one daughter and four sons, named all four of his boys after directors he admired. His oldest son, Kiefer, also a successful actor, as many of you know, is named for writer-director Warren Kiefer, who directed Sutherland in his first movie, a low-budget Italian horror film. His son, Rogue, is named for Nicholas Rogue, who directed Sutherland in Don't Look Now from 1973. His son, Rosif, is named for French director Frederick Rosif. And his youngest son, Angus, got his middle name, Redford, from the director of Ordinary People, Robert Redford. Considering the range of Donald Sutherland's stellar work in films as vastly different as Ordinary People, Clute, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Pride and Prejudice, JFK, and The Hunger Games, just to name a few, quite shocking that he was never even nominated for an Academy Award. Sutherland is widely considered the best actor of his generation never to be nominated. The Academy took a big step toward rectifying that wrong when it gave Sutherland an honorary Oscar in 2017, which he expressed deep appreciation for in his funny and heartfelt acceptance speech, saying, this is very important to me, to my family. He added, I wish I could say thank you to all of the characters that I've played. Thank them for using their lives to inform my life. Ahead tonight, Sutherland stars in a 1971 thriller opposite Jane Fonda, who wrote beautifully about him after his death. Directed by Alan J. Pakula, Clute is next on TCM. Next on TCM, Clute, then Kelly's Heroes, and later, Report from the Aleutians. TCM takes you there tonight. 
Hello, Ben Mankiewicz with you. Glad you're watching TCM, where we're paying tribute to one of the premier actors of his generation, Donald Sutherland, who died in June at 88. That word, tribute, may remind some fans of Sutherland's memorable work as the villainous President Snow in four Hunger Games movies between 2012 and 2015. For those afflicted with recency bias, Sutherland's remarkably diverse movie career spanned six decades, beginning to take off with a breakout performance in The Dirty Dozen from 1967. Three years later, he was a full-fledged star, courtesy of the 1970 anti-war comedy MASH, as well as a heist war movie hybrid, Kelly's Heroes, also released in 1970. Sutherland went on actor, a profession he loved far more than the fame that came with it. He played leading roles and character parts in all types of films and television shows. All told, Sutherland has been in nearly 200 films and television series. Along the way, he became routinely revered by the actors and filmmakers he worked with. After his death, the tributes came in fast and furious. One in particular came from his co-star in the movie we have next. From 1971, Donald Sutherland stars opposite Jane Fonda in Clute. Fonda and Sutherland fell for each other during production on Clute, a relationship that lasted more than a year. I am stunned to hear that Donald Sutherland has died, wrote Fonda. Donald was a brilliant actor and a complex man who shared quite a few adventures with me, such as the FTA show, an anti-Vietnam War tour that performed for 60,000 active duty soldiers, sailors, and Marines in Hawaii, Okinawa, the Philippines, and Japan in 1971. I am heartbroken, Fonda concluded. In Clute, Sutherland plays John Clute, a police officer hired to look into a businessman's disappearance in New York. The trail leads him to an aspiring actress, Brie Daniels. That's Jane Fonda in an Oscar-winning performance. Brie is living a double life, going on auditions by day, paying her bills by night as a call girl. As Clute tries to put the pieces together, the investigation turns dark and dangerous. This is a terrific film from director Alan J. Pakula, grim and uneasy in all the right ways, thanks in part to the camera work of cinematographer Gordon Willis. From Warner Brothers in 1971, also with Charles Chiaffi and Roy Scheider. Clute. In 1971, you'd be forgiven if you thought Clute was the name of Jane Fonda's character, not Donald Sutherland's. The film's ad campaign focused heavily on Fonda, featuring her trend setting hairstyle and fashionable wardrobe. Fonda was also influencing national politics as a fervent anti-Vietnam War activist, work embraced by Sutherland. Sutherland told Playboy he didn't like doing anything political in the U.S. because he was Canadian, but because Canada participated in the Vietnam War, he said, quote, I felt on this I had a right. They were both members of a comedy troupe called FTA, which stood for Free the Army, for some, while others used a different F word to start the phrase. FTA helped create and stage anti-war roadshows for GIs as a counter to Bob Hope's popular flag-waving USO shows. Like Hope, FTA performed for tens of thousands of active duty soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines. Their work is the subject of a highly controversial 1972 documentary that was quickly yanked from theaters and impossible to see for decades. Coming up, more from this particularly dynamic period of Donald Sutherland's career. He joins Clint Eastwood, Telly Savalas, and Don Rickles in a World War II heist movie. Kelly's Heroes from MGM in 1970 is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, Kelly's Heroes. Then report from the Aleutians. And later, the treasure of Pancho Villa. Get rich with TCM tonight.